Not much wind. It's a bit nice though, the play of the light and the water. It will win at last. Blowing in completely the other direction. That is the way. What we hate, we YouTubers, is arriving somewhere and it's all noisy. So everything we record has got this strange noise in the background. People relaying the road.
La Maison Blanche are an utter delight. They were built over many years by local fishermen just to store their fishing materials, but gradually they have been turned into something quite different. The fishermen own the huts, but there is an association that manages the whole environment collectively. And it shows what happens when people are allowed just to build what they want and delight in covering things with colour and imagery and decoration, an antidote to an antidote to modernism, perhaps. It's just wonderful to wander round between the little alleyways and to see all the little details that people have put on their little waterside huts. Well, it all feels a lot more spacious, it has to be said. The ceilings way up there, which is, is a great advantage. I'm less convinced by this as a good anchorage. <laughs> it's rubbish anchorage, but fortunately we're not expecting any, um, any bad weather. What's been going on tonight is that a helpful guy who's in one of the huts came along and he keeps he keeps reckoning I'm going to end up on the slipway, I'm going to be slid sideways by the incoming tide and he keeps moving my anchor, my up beach anchor and the trouble is I sort of, <laughs> it's all very nice and he's very helpful and he's charming but I actually did think about it very hard where my anchors were so I'm going to have to move my up beach anchor again, but the trouble is I've already moved it once away from where he put it and I don't, I'm afraid he'll come back and, and get offended. So he came back again, did the man, moved my anchor again. So um, I've decided to leave it where he's moved it to, but I've set up another rope, which I've taken all the way up the beach and tied to one of the huts so that I can line up between my two anchors which is what I want and still end up on a bit of the beach I want to end up resting on um, and then his, he's put my anchor through a, an eye bolt he clearly doesn't trust my anchors to stay stuck to the beach um, and he says oh with, there's all sorts of ribs crashed into this beach before now well I don't know maybe these ribs didn't have decent anchors I don't know but anyway he's perfectly charming and he's going to let me look in his hut tomorrow so 
So there we are, but the, the beach is now a cat's cradle of ropes. I've taken one over to the cal as well. So if both my anchors drag, I have other ropes now. So every single rope is, is ready to be deployed. And um, <laughs> there we are. Mm, now I've info. Tides and currents. Tides. Rest. Oh. Oh, yeah. oh. So it's midnight. Um, uh, 50 minutes from high water. So um, we'll go higher up the beach. <laughs> We haven't ended up dragging our anchors or anything. Okay. So, it's what time is it? Quarter to one, so pretty well high tide. So we should uh, settle on the bottom shortly and then uh, hopefully we won't be at too much of an angle and I won't need to get up again and wedge something under the side of the boat. Oh, right, well, we're settled on the beach now. I think I'm going to leave the boat like this. We are leaning over, but it doesn't feel doesn't feel too bad. It's uh, two in the morning. <sighs> two in the morning. Oh. Oh. Well, I'm, I'm, going, I'm going to sleep again. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Oh. Trouble is with Central European time, it takes so long to get light in the morning. Oh. Oh. This is my snug new snug pack winter sleeping bag with a sensible zip up the center. Why do so many sleeping bags not have sensible zips up the center? I don't understand, but snug pack do. Snug pack. Snuggly snug pack. <laughs> Oh, I'd stay in bed. I'd stay in bed longer, but I want to pee. <sighs> oh. It is sort of getting light, actually, out there. I want to be up early enough to have a bit of a wander around before everyone um, everyone wakes up. So I um, I wanted to talk a bit more about Ventile because there's uh, if you Google it, there's someone who's posted something on the web that's trying to denounce it. He's he's denouncing it as a clothing fabric rather than as a as a tent fabric. I don't know that he knows much about tents. I'm afraid I'm not certain he knows much about fabric either. What this this person does is he he says it can't be real ventile because it's now made in Switzerland. I don't know I don't know how he works that out. I don't know why the, the Swiss can't manage to make decent cotton and the manufacturers of the 
clothes that you can get made from Vental are in general quite small companies that specialize in making clothes for people who want something rather different and they are outraged by this denunciation because they have a loyal following. Well, it is the real thing. It really was developed in the Second World War. It really was developed to make immersion suits. And initially, obviously, it was simply made for the for the British military and then it became marketed as a product somewhat later on. So I sort of, it is sad, good fabric like this is, that there's a popular denunciation of it on the web and, and what can what can us defenders do than, than just defend it and say no it is, it is a good product even though it's made in Switzerland. But um, his main attack is on the fact that it's um, treated with DWR to make the water shedding, to, in, to improve the water shedding. The, uh, the DWR does use um, a petrochemical um, and that does make Ventile less green than um, it pr could otherwise say it is. Uh, though they do now actually produce a bio version of Ventile, an organic version of Ventile, which is treated with, with beeswax or something like that instead. As eventually it gets completely damp as this tent is now, the, the, um, it's absorbed the dew, so it's, um, it's damp to the touch inside. Um, and it's shrunk. The other thing I should say about um, Ventile is that it it shrinks every time this is what i hadn't realized it's not when i talked last time about the shrinkage that's not just once and then it's a new size no <laughs> every time it gets damp it shrinks markedly and goes taut and then when it gets dry completely dry in the sun it relaxes my, now my last tent did the same, which was simple cotton duck, and I think probably all canvas tents do that. I just wasn't um, aware of that. Whether it is the best thing to make this tent from, I don't know. The, the, the people I ordered it from, Point North, do provide a a tent fabric, a cotton tent fabric, which actually would be slightly, it's a slightly heavier weave than this, but only, only slightly. And that might have been fine. I just thought, we'll try the ventile. It's people who, who have ventile tents and indeed ventile clothes really swear by it. Spoons, spoonsy spoons. wonderful thing about La Maison Blanche is you can go to the cafe for morning coffee. The lights were dim as our eyes met and you saw me. And for people who ask what you do about a toilet when you're camping aboard a boat, there's one of them too. I found my anchor-moving friend of the night before on the beach 
and he invited me back to his little hut overlooking the foreshore to share some drinks. I was then invited to have even more drinks with his other hut owning friends in the association that manages the huts on the foreshore and the morning passed very amicably until the tide came back in again and it was time to sail away from La Maison Blanche with foghorn sounding across the harbour as a low mist lay on the waters of the Rad. Tide could float me off, but I couldn't actually sail away until I'd sorted out all those ropes I had to use to moor to the beach. I hadn't sailed far. Just half a day, half a day across the Rad de Brest from the big marina at Moulin Blanc. But I felt I had sailed into a different world. I had experienced the life of this strange little community of hut owners. I had seen what in their words they called un petit coin de paradis, a little piece of paradise. Mm -hmm.